It's been well over a year since Apple released the M1 Mac Mini, and at this point, I can safely say that it's hands down the best bang for the buck desktop PC that you can get right now, with sale prices all the way down to $650 new, or even $550 with a renewed guarantee from Amazon. And when I talk about best bang for your buck, I'm not only talking about the impressive performance of the M1 chip compared to the competition, but also things like completely silent operation, the compact and portable design, and lastly, the reliability of macOS, which is by far the most important thing for regular consumers who just want their PC to work. And the beauty of the M1 Mac Mini is that it's the absolute least expensive way to get your hands on Apple's famous M1 chip, especially if you're looking for a desktop setup with more ports and external devices like a large display or external SSD storage connected to it. And if that sounds like something you'd prefer over having an M1 MacBook Air, then the M1 Mac Mini is a no-brainer. But the real issue I want to cover in this review is whether you should buy one right now or wait for the new redesigned Mac Minis to come out. And yes, I said Mac Minis, since Mark Gurman believes both a new low-end and a high-end model are coming this year. But before I get into explaining the differences between those two new Mac Mini models, let me first talk about our experience with the M1 Mac Mini after over a year. As you probably already know, Apple simply took the M1 chip and plopped it into the Mac Mini without really changing anything else. And the most impressive part is just how little room the actual M1 logic board and cooling system takes up within the chassis, making it pretty obvious that the future M2 Mac Mini redesign can get a lot smaller. But one of the downsides to the M1 Mac Mini is the fact that Apple limited it to just two Thunderbolt ports instead of four on the Intel model, and it kind of sucks that the two USB-A ports are also limited to just five gigabits per second speeds. But over the past year, companies have been coming up with some awesome solutions to this port issue, like for example, Treblit, who sent us over some hubs specifically designed for the M1 Mac Mini. And what really makes these special is that they match the color and the size of the Mac Mini so you can simply stack it on top. And the best part of all is that all the USB ports are twice as fast as the ones on the back of the Mac Mini, supporting full 10 gigabit per second speeds, as well as giving you SD card and CF Express slots. But my favorite part of all is that they come with a built-in NVMe SSD slot rated at full 2800 megabytes per second speeds, so you're getting a secret external SSD without using any extra desk space, and you can easily daisy chain multiple hubs stacked on top of each other for even more ports and SSD connections. But if you're looking for something even more compact in case you're an M1 MacBook user, they've also got a new USB 4 Super Dock complete with extra ports like Thunderbolt, DisplayPort, Ethernet, full speed USB ports, and of course, an internal 2800 megabytes per second NVMe SSD slot, making for the smallest and fastest dock on the market right now that also supports 60 watt MacBook charging. So if you never want to worry about ports again, you can find the links to both of these Treble products down in the description below. Now moving on to the actual performance of the M1 Mac Mini, we noticed that the M1 chip was extremely impressive in terms of CPU performance in Cinebench R23 compared to the old Intel i7 model. But the thing that shocked us the most was that the M1 was completely silent during the test, with the fans running at the idle 1700 RPM compared to 4400 RPM on the Intel Mac Mini. Not only that, but it was using much less power, only around 13 watts compared to a steady 75 on the Intel i7. But the absolute biggest difference was graphics performance, with the M1 being over four times faster than the integrated Intel graphics, which was mind blowing, but in real world gaming benchmarks, there was an even bigger difference, now almost six times faster. And then when we got to all the real world tests, 
the M1 continued to slaughter the i7 in everything from music production, Lightroom photo editing, Xcode programming, and especially video editing in Final Cut Pro, where the differences were absolutely crazy. So based on all of that, it's pretty obvious that Apple made the right choice by switching over to their new M1 chip, but over the past year, the difference that really stood out is that it just runs so much more reliably. It's basically always snappy, compared to the occasional hangups that the Intel chips would have. And the instant on feature that Craig Federighi showed off is a life changer that you can only realize when you go back to an Intel based system. And trust me, that is no joke because Macs still uses our $15,000 Intel Mac Pro setup in the office every day because we still haven't been able to sell it ever since the M1 launched. And the one thing he always complains about is how the Mac Pro isn't nearly as snappy as a $1,000 M1 MacBook Air. I literally just asked him to run a web browsing speed test and his Mac Pro came back with 46.6 points for some weird reason instead of the usual 134 when everything is running perfectly, compared to a massive 281 points with the M1 Mac Mini. So the point that I'm making is that Apple has optimized this chip incredibly well so that it simply runs great all the time compared to occasional hiccups with Intel chips that makes you want to restart the machine to get refreshed performance. And this level of everyday reliability is what makes the M1 chip truly special. Now the even crazier thing is that our main editor Angelica has been using the 24 inch M1 iMac for the past nine months to edit almost every single video that goes up on our channel. And she literally does not remember the last time she's heard any fan noise at all even while exporting our 4K videos, and the story's exactly the same for the M1 Mac Mini. And it's simply mind-blowing that you can now buy one for as low as $650 brand new or $550 renewed with this level of performance and reliability during a time when Windows desktop PC prices are sky high because of graphics chip shortages and everything else. So if you're someone who just wants a reliable desktop computer for everyday use, the M1 Mac Mini is literally the best bang for the buck PC out there, and it's an absolute no brainer. But the only downside of the M1 Mac Mini is that performance is limited for those who really need a lot of power for productivity work. Seeing as the latest Alder Lake i5 12600K CPU for around $280 on Amazon is now quite a bit faster in terms of performance. And while a full custom built desktop PC with this new Intel CPU will be a lot more more expensive than the M1 Mac Mini, there's no doubt that the M1 chip simply isn't enough for the heavy power users out there. And if that's you, I would say that you should 100% wait for Apple's redesigned Mac Mini models that are rumored to be coming as soon as next month's March 8th event, which is when I'm personally expecting Apple to reveal the new high-end M1 Max Mac Mini complete with the first full redesign in almost 12 years. And if you're wondering what it's gonna look like, Renders by Shailesh recently made some new renders showing off just how impressively thin it's gonna look compared to the current model. And yes, it's gonna come with four Thunderbolt ports and the new magnetic power connector from the M1 iMac. But the most important part of all is that you'll be able to configure it with up to the crazy M1 Max chip with 64 gigs of RAM and the 32 core GPU, which has more than enough performance for almost everyone out there. Now, the only caveat is that I'm personally expecting it to start at $1,300 for the base M1 Pro model, but if you care about performance whatsoever, I would definitely wait for the new redesigned high-end Mac Mini model. But in the case that you're not looking to spend that much money, there's also a good chance that Apple will be updating this M1 Mac Mini later this year with the M2 chip for around the same price or maybe $100 more brand new, which will be awesome because of the new redesign. So in my opinion, if you can wait until potentially October, I would probably do that for the new design alone, 
but if you want a reliable budget PC right now for as low as $550 renewed on Amazon, you can find a link to that deal in the description below because that's the best option right now. So hopefully you enjoyed this one year review of the M1 Mac Mini, and if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one, and definitely check out the redesigned Mac Mini Leaks video right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.